Number one, if you're going to take land back, understand this. Everything, say everything, begins with a word from the Lord. All right, so you have to start with a word from God. Now, Peter is on the boat, and the Bible says immediately Jesus said to him, um, because he's walking to him on the water, he says, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. And then Peter said, if it's you, Peter replied, then you tell me to come on the water. And the Lord gave him a word, somebody say, come. And he said, then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. Do you notice that? What is Peter walking on here? No, he's walking on a word. Because the word transcends the water. Because the word made the water. The word made everything you see now. The word made the chair you're sitting in. The word made the body that you're breathing in. The word made everything. And when you have a word, you move into a level of superiority than everything else. You move to the supreme level. Because you have a word. That's why it's it's important if you if you have something in your heart and you want to believe for something, uh, some type of land in your life, you, you have to do what you have to do to get a word from God. Now, once I heard about this building, I've already had words on it. So I'm already, like, the, literally, the day the building was dedicated, a past, a, one of the pastors came to him up to me. And he's not really, he doesn't really believe in the prophetic and stuff like that. He's a pretty conservative guy. He's a pretty level-headed guy. And he says, Jason, there was a word given that one day a, a church would own this whole both blocks. That was 45 days ago. 45 days later, no, listen to me. You don't even know what's happening, but these buildings are coming up quick where it looked like they weren't going to come up for years. Now, out of nowhere, within 45 days, it's like happening. But God won't just give you a prophetic word he'll give you a promise to back up that word. And so that's the first place you want to start. If you have a problem, find a promise. If there's land you need to take, go to the word of God. Find out what God says and let God, what I like to say it, blow it up in your spirit. Not just a word where I'm reading a word, like, you know, you can go to the Christian bookstore and get the word and they have all these promises and, you know, like you're going to have a better life and you, God has a great plan for you and all that's a word. I'm not going to mock that or make fun of that because it is the word of God. But if you're going to stand on a word, it has to become a rhema to you. It has to be revealed to you where God says, this is my word for this situation. This is what I have for you. And that word is the word of authority. That's the word that transcends storms. That's the water walking word. Come on now. That's the word that kills giants. That's the word that brings down Jericho's walls. That's the word. How many believe God for a word? You got to believe for that word. You want to believe God for that word. You want, to, you want to ask for that word and believe for it and receive it by faith. Amen. Now, when it's from God and you got a word from God, he brings confirmation. So there'll be, there'll be like, we call it a God story. Where you, you can, and that's something that I've learned over 30 years. You can see God moving in that story. And there's confirmation. And the people that love you, that, now, I got to say this, because some people love you, but they don't have no faith. And they'll talk you out of your miracle. Okay, so you got to be careful for those kind of people. Some of them are, are your family. Yeah, because if I listened to everybody that loved me, I wouldn't be here right now. And that's a hard pill to swallow, I know. And I'm not, being, I'm not saying be naive. But you want to surround yourself with people of maturity, people that are seasoned, people that have fought the good fight of faith and obtained, people that know their God, people that have gotten breakthrough. Those are the kind of people you want bringing confirmation to you. Because they're, they're, their spirit will bear witness with what God is telling you. But if their spirits of, of just men, spirits of men and women who are mature in the Lord don't really agree with what you're saying, I would take that word back to, the, to, to, to prayer. So when I get something like this opportunity, I don't just go fly off the handle. I, I was on the phone with Pastor Russell this morning. Huh. Come on, somebody. Why? Because, because 
we, we want to make sure we got something really from God here. And if it's from God, it'll pass the test of spiritual men and women. I'm, can I keep teaching? We're doing a podcast right now, me and you. Lunch with Pastor Jay. Come on. It's 11 o'clock. We're having lunch. I like this. It's good? All right, write this down. Or I already wrote it down for you. Tell your neighbor, build a case of faith. This will be a cool hashtag, a faith case. <laughs> That's great, huh? Build a faith case. So if you're an attorney and you got to prosecute somebody or you, you, you're, you're the defending attorney and you want to defend your client, you got to build a case so when the jury comes out, you can unroll that case with all your evidence and say, he couldn't have done it. He couldn't have done it. She couldn't have done it. They weren't even there. But it looks just like him. That was his brother. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. My God. All right. So you got you to have a case. If you don't have a case, if your case is weak, when you go to a court of law and the accuser of the brethren, the devil shows up and said, it's not going to happen. It's never going to happen because you will be tested on what you believe. It's called the good fight of faith. And if you don't have a strong case, when the temptation comes to quit, you may quit and miss out on the opportunities of God. When the Lord told me to take Santa Fe Springs and we were looking for the building, the Lord gave me a word to act. He said, act. What does that mean? That means do something now. So I picked up the phone. I called my, my, my uh, realtor, Gary. I said, make the offer. He said, for what? I said, for what they're asking. He goes, you don't want a deal? I said, no, the Lord told me to act, so I'm acting. Offer what they're asking. They accepted our offer. What I didn't know, there was another church fighting for that building. And they were fighting over five cents a square foot. And they lost that building for five cents. Now, I believe God had another building for them, whatever. But the, the, the fact of the matter was, I'm, God didn't want me to lose any building. He wanted me to get it. But I could have lost that opportunity. And all the people that came to Santa Fe Springs wouldn't have been able to come because there would have been no building. And I would have missed out on a God opportunity. You got to build a strong case. And how do you build a case? You get a word from God. And if it's from God, he'll confirm it over and over with more words. And you build and you build and you build and you build. And before you know it, like my mom and dad, believing for me and my sister and my brother, had eight pages of notes of the word of God. That's a case. That's a documented case that you could plead to the court of heaven. You said, you said, you said. And then you could tell the devil, he said, he said. Come on, somebody shout. You're going to build a faith case. So when the temptations come, and they will come, that will come. That devil has to back off you because you have a case. No temptation has overtaken you, as such as common to man. But God will make a way of escape. What is the way of escape? It's your case. It's your faith. And you go to the case of faith and you say, God, you said, God, you said, I'm being tempted to throw in the towel. I'm being tempted to quit. I'm being tempted to give up. Don't get weary in well-doing. In due season, you will reap a harvest if you faint not. You got a case. You got evidence. Faith is the evidence of the things not seen. Just because I can't see it, just because I can't feel it, just because I don't have the keys, doesn't mean it's not mine. I have evidence, and my evidence is the Word of God. My evidence is the promesas de Dios. My, come on, my evidence is the promises of God. How many have evidence in the Word of God? You got to build your case. Come on, elbow your neighbor and tell him, build your case. Do you have a strong case? Or do you have a weak case? Is it a flimsy case? Is it a case put together with like, you know, lipstick and band-aids? Come on now. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. I heard it in a movie. Come on. No, we're building a solid case. Because we're going to build everything we build on what? We're not, building on, we're not building things on a whim. We're not building flimsy things. We're building based on the word. We're building on the rock of the word. Because storms will come. But when we build on the word of God, storms can come. Storms can go. But come on, the word of God and whatever is built on the word of God will remain. That's why we build our families on the word. We build the salvation of our families on the word. We build the salvation of our children on the word. We, whatever land we're believing God for, we build it on the word. Got to have word. 
And you want a lot of word. Don't just get one word. Get another word. And another word. And another one. And another one. And another one. And another one. And then speak those words all day, every day. Build it in your spirit. Come on, somebody. Get the devil nervous with that word. That, that double-edged sword. Glory to God. Glory to God. Numbers 33, God says, when you go into the land of Canaan, when you get there, you need to drive out, here's the word, drive out all the inhabitants of the land. Destroy all their idols. Demolish all their high places. All their carved images. What's the word? The word, when you go into Canaan, take out everything that's not of me. That's why when I came into this property, I had to clear out the atmosphere. Come on, somebody. Somebody act like this is for today. We are cast out that religious spirit, that poverty spirit, that lukewarm spirit, that compromising spirit, that perverse spirit. Get out of here. Come on, somebody. Somebody ought to shout like we're going to obey the word. This is not a stance of being, this is not passivity. This is aggression. This is moving forward. This is taking possession. Take possession. Come on, say it. Take possession. Say it three times. Take possession. Take possession. Take possession of the land. And not only take it, settle it. Rebuild it. Reconstruct it. Come on, tear out the old walls and put up the new walls. Somebody shout like we're going to be obedient. I, God's timing is perfect. For I have given you the land to what? To what? To what? To what? So if you don't possess it, God can't have it. Because this land belonged to God. Well, it belonged to God's people, yes, but they were stewards, not owners. Because when they were going to die, God wanted their children's children to have the land. So they were possessing the land for generations to come. And there was giants in the land. That brings me to point two. This is good teaching. Beware of the thief. How many know the devil comes to kill, steal, and what? He's a thief. Beware of the thief. And it's, it is the thief called worry, fear, and discouragement. All forms of distraction. The, lo the devil doesn't want you to keep your faith on a thing. He wants your faith to come off that thing. Because as long as your faith is out there, God can move out there with you. But when we move into fear, we sink like Peter. It wasn't God's will for Peter to sink, but when he moved from faith to fear, then the hand of God had to back off. Now mercy kicked in and pu pu pulled them back up, but God's will is for Peter and Jesus to walk all the way on water and to teach. What lessons would he have learned that he could have taught us? Joshua 1, 6, 7, 6 to 7 and 9 says, be strong and what? Tell your neighbor, be strong and what? That doesn't say be weak and feel sorry for yourself. It doesn't say be sorrowful and pitiful. It doesn't say murmur and complain about everything's not getting better. I can't hang around with some of you too long. You make me depressed just being around you. Sometimes I hang with pastors. I want to slap them in the head. What are you talking about? You act like God is not real. You act like God's dead. You act like God fell off the throne. God is on the throne. God is in charge. And we believe that God is able. Somebody ought to shout in here. You will lead these people to inherit the land I promised to give them. This is crazy. God promised them this land. How come they don't have it? How come they don't have the land? It's because 
the elders that went to spy out the land came back and said, we know God said it, but we can't do it. We can't afford it. We're not able. We don't have what it takes. God didn't say you could afford it. God didn't say you have what it takes. All God says is take the flipping land. Come on, somebody. Somebody ought to shout in here like I'm on fire right now. Come on, Freedom Family. Because when you start not obeying God, you could miss out on 10 years of your life, 20 years of your life. You could miss an opportunity that affects a generation. Because they disobeyed God, because they allowed fear and discouragement and worry to come in, they had to die in a desert of a land of barely get by when God had a promised land for them and their children. God had prosperity and abundance, but the God of fear ruled their heart. The God of worry ruled their heart. The God of discouragement ruled their heart. You can't play with worry. You can't play with fear. You can't play with discouragement. That is a spirit assigned to rob the promise right out of your children's mouth. You ought to help me preach a little bit in here. So they all died out in unbelief. God still took care of them because he's merciful. God still provided for them barely because he's kind. But they didn't step into all God had because of their own insecurity, because their own inferiority complex, because their own orphan spirit and roots of rejection that they refused to deal with that Pharaoh beat into them and they had a limited mentality, a pauvre mentality, a barely get by mentality and God's like, I gotta break that off of you but you're not willing so I'm gonna raise up the next generation. Somebody shout like God is raising up the next generation. Be strong and very courageous. Tell your neighbor, be strong and very courageous. Oh, I can't, Pastor. Then God's a liar. Oh, you don't understand, Pastor. I'm just, I'm just, I, I just not who I am. Who told you, you you're not strong? Who told you and lied to you and told you you're not courageous? At what point in your childhood did you believe a lie that you're intimidated? What point did you believe a lie? Because it's a lie. And God said, be strong and be courageous build that building raise those children do what he called you to do take the land glory to god i feel a praise in the atmosphere glory i didn't say a patty cake give god a praise break break they said don't have a panic attack have a praise attack your praise is your agreement Be careful to obey all the word my servant Moses gave you. Don't play the piano yet. I'm not even close to being done. Thank you, though. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Tell your neighbor, if you got a word, and if you obey that word, you're going to be successful wherever you go. Why? Because you are the walking word. You carry the word. They pull you out, the thing will fail. They fire you, the thing will fall apart. Come on, somebody. They move you from that city, it'll, it'll fall apart. But as long as you're there, God's backing you. That's why when the cities came against Jesus, he said, shake off the dust. The blessing's on you. It's not on a building, it's not on an organization. The blessing's on the word. And when a man or woman receives the word, they carry the blessing. That's why you can drop somebody with the word anywhere, anywhere. Come back, that company will thrive. Come on, that building will thrive. That property will thrive. That family will thrive. That church will thrive because you're carrying success. Somebody shout like you're carrying success. You're carrying confidence. Peace, peace. Glory to God. Lift your head up high. Don't hang your head down low. Stop playing the sorrow, the willow sorrow harp. No, you play the song of Zion. You play the song of faith. You play the song of trust. You play the song of peace. Thief. Glory to God. Somebody ought to give God a praise. I'm feeling this today. No, no, you give God a roar in the house. Come on, church. All right. 
Tell your neighbor, God says to you, neighbor, have I not commanded you? This is not a suggestion. This is not a suggestion. A lot of times in our culture, in our society, we want to nurse worry. We want to nurse people's fear. We want to nurse their discouragement. Ay, por cita. Ay, 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 tú. That don't change nothing. I understand your pain. I understand what you're going through. But I'm not going to sit there and have sympathy. I'll have compassion. Come on, I'll weep with you. But then I'm going to pull you out. For my Bible said, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich because of what God is able to do. I feel authority in the room. This is a global anointing right now. Somebody shout. I feel the power of God. Tell your neighbor it's a command. command. Wrong neighbor because you love him and you came with him. Tell him again. It's a command. Not a suggestion. That means what God is about to ask you to do, you ain't going to be able to do it without him. But tell your neighbor, be strong. Hold on, you're going to get me going. Tell your neighbor, be strong. No, speak it into them. Be strong. Pick your head up high. And tell them, be courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you. Wherever you go, Jehovah Jireh is with you. The Lord shall provide for himself. Take 30 seconds and give God a profilian anointing. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do me a favor, high five three people say the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Come on, the Lord is with you too. Tell somebody else, the Lord is with you, 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 and you. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be discouraged. You don't need to be downtrodden. Pick your head up, woman of God. Pick your head up, man of God. You've got the giant killer on your side. You've got the God that opens up the sea. You've got the God that spoke in six days and made a heaven and a earth. If God is for you, who can be against you? Somebody thank God that he's with you. Praise him that he's with you. Praise him that you have a promise. Praise him that you have a case. Praise him in your uprising. Praise him in your down setting. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Give him honor. Give him glory. Give him adoration. Be strong. Please stand on your feet. I got to close. Glory. 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 You see, it's God's timing versus man's timing. I didn't plan Monday to get a call. But you think I'm going to miss out on this opportunity? And then have God deal with me later? I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to go as far as I can go. And then let God do the rest. Let God be true. I feel like preaching a little bit today. Go as far as you can in your parenting. Go as far as you can in your marriage. Go as far as you can in that business. Go as far as you can in that leadership. Go as far as you can with your health. But when all is said and done, let God arise and his enemy be scattered. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. No weapon. Wow. No weapon formed against you will prosper or succeed. What do you mean? That means God said, I looked at the enemy and I saw him make the weapon. I saw him form it. I know what the, what's in the weapon. I know the velocity of the weapon. I know the materials in the weapon. I know the destructive power of the weapon. But what the enemy doesn't know is I made you stronger than his weapon. Tell somebody, tell them, no weapon.
weapon. Not one weapon. No, not one weapon formed against your children, formed against your family, formed against your body. Not one weapon. Not a weapon called cancer. Not a weapon called arthritis. Not a weapon called addiction. Not one weapon. Tell your neighbor, no weapon formed against your career. No weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. But lift up your voice and decree a thing and tell that devil, you're, you gotta go. Mountain, get out of my way. Giant, you will fall. Give God a shout like you got weapons of war. And they're not carnal, but they're mighty and paws for the pulling down of strongholds. God's timing. I thought maybe two, three years, maybe four or five years. I didn't think Monday. When I heard the news, I freaked out. What am I looking at? That's what I'm praying happens to you this week. A freak out text. Yeah. Nah, you don't. See, some of you, ain't, you like your little comfort. But when God's going to move, you ain't going to be comfortable. You better learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because the promised land is waiting on you. You and all these people, get ready. Somebody say, get ready. Say it again, get ready. Get ready. Get, 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 get ready to cross over this Jordan. Come on to the land that the Lord is about to give us. Lord, have mercy. He said, bring the timber and build my house that I may take pleasure and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but it came out to be little. Why? You brought it home. I blew it away. Why? Declares the Lord, because of my house, which remains in ruin. Well, each of you is busy with his own house. What is God saying? Your timing is not my time. You said your time is to build your house. But I said, no, it's the time to build my house. You don't, you don't tell God what to do. God tells you what to do. I don't sit there and tell God, you're going to do this for me. No, no, no. I'm the servant of God. You're a servant of God. You do what daddy tells you to do. Do whatever he tells you to do. Oh, Rabbi. Do whatever. Oh, I feel a miracle happening right now. A miracle's being released right now. A miracle. A milagro de Dios. Whatever he tells you to do. Whatever he tells you to give. Whatever he tells you to obey, you obey God. Lord, have mercy. He said, hey, hey, we're having a party. Hey, the wedding of the king of Galilee. The wine runs out. So what kind of, what kind of wedding is this? The wine ran out. And they tell J Jesus' mother, what's up, Mary? The miracle worker is over here. What's going on? And she, she said, whatever he tells you to do, obey it. So these guys get two pitchers of water. He said, go fill it up with water. And then go give it to the people in charge. It was water. They went and got pitchers of water. You know how long it takes to make wine? Some bottles take 100 years. I'm not saying go make wine. Come on, somebody. Okay, so somebody make that pruno. Come on now. So you go... That moonshine, I rebuke you. Come on, so, so you feel that water? Feel the water? Got the pot? Got the pot? How, how's yours look? Water. How's yours look? Water. Well, he told us to put water in these jars, yeah. And then he said to go give it to the people in charge. Okay, well, it's still water. We can get beat up. We can get killed out here. There's no, there's no wine. It's water. You know how much money this thing would be with, of wine? This is hundreds of thousands of dollars of wine. I don't got hundreds of thousands. You got hundreds? No, we can go to the store and buy some. I ain't got no money for that. What are we going to do? Just do what he said. Yeah, but there's no, there's no wine in there. It's just water. How are you going to make water into wine? That's impossible. Just do it. Yeah, but you can't do it. Just do it. Let's just go. Come on. Take a few steps. 
Ain't no wine. How's yours? Look the same. A couple of that. Getting closer. Getting closer. You got any wine? No. Water. You got? No. Water. What about you? Water. 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 Getting closer. Water. 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 Sometimes how the miracle works, huh? And then they get right to the fair. And then they go, put the cup in. Water turned to wine. It was the best one, too. God saves the best miracles for last. Come on now. The first will be last. Last will be first. But the miracle happened because they obeyed. If you want comfort, and you love comfort more than you love God, that's your idol. You have to challenge that. I love to be comfortable. If you don't like to be comfortable, I mean, naturally, something's probably wrong with you. Because <laughs> everybody likes to be comfortable. God gives rest. Even God rested on the seventh day. He gives Shabbat Shalom so we can rest. Come on, somebody. So God's not against rest, but when God's going to move, like here, no, we don't want to go in the promised land. We like our tents. You know, we have barely enough. God's like, you need to go to the promised land. Oh, no. And how many people don't step out into what God says because they love comfort rather than obedience to God? You got to love God more than comfort. Now, now I'm speaking from great experience. You got to love God more than you love comfort. And I've learned that. There's a time to be comfortable, and there's a time to obey God. And when it's time to obey God, it's time for me to be uncomfortable. And I have to trust God when I don't see God. I have to trust God when there's water in the pot that hasn't turned into wine yet. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> That's heavy. Number four, bathe everything in prayer. Pray, pray, and keep praying. And number five, I close. Stay on the word daily and stay highly motivated in faith. For your waste and desolate places and the land of your destruction will even now be too small for the inhabitants. And those who swallowed you up will be far away from you. And the children you will have after you have lost the others will say again in your ears, this place is too small for me. Come on, Espanol. Give me a place that I may dwell. Come on, freedom. Come on, freedom, city youth. Come on. <laughs> Come on, freedom training centers. Come on, freedom training center, young girls. Freedom training center, boys. Come on, freedom centers. Come on, freedom city. Come on, freedom city. Call Russell. I called him this morning. I called him this morning. I told him. He goes, you know what? I said, what? He goes, it's Amos 9.13 in the message. And I said, you need to stop. He said, why? I said, because that's my sermon this morning. He laughed because he preached on opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity. Because in China, in the 12, year 1200, Genghis Khan had a son. And then his grandson was in power and he united all of China and Genghis Khan's grand grandson sent a message to, to Rome to the church Christian Church of Rome Catholic Church Christian he called it Christian and he said bring a hundred of your mighty leaders and bring them over here to baptize me and all of my leaders and in turn they'll baptize you'll baptize all of the people under them so you'll have the greatest known Christian revival in the history of mankind. And the cardinal didn't do that. I'm sorry, the pope didn't do that. He sent only two missionaries. And they quit in Iraq before they got there. They said it was too tough. And Genghis Khan's grandson turned to Buddhism. And the rest is history. Because they missed an opportunity. Our lives would be different. The Asian community would be different. All the Eastern religions that have come out of China wouldn't have come. Christianity would have come. And China would have been like America. It would have been a Christian nation like Europe. But because of the missed opportunity for generations, look what's come out of China. The wars, even to this day. Crazy, right? We 
you can't miss opportunities because it affects not only us, but it affects the generations coming behind us. I don't need, I'm telling you all this because I'm, I'm believing for your land. And I believe for your land, your family, your child. I'm always believing. But I need you to agree with me on this. Yeah. Let's believe God to take it. Let's believe God to take back what the enemy stole. I don't want that to become apartments. That's what they want to do. They want to knock it down and build apartments. I don't want to do that. Our city wants the church there. We want the church there. God needs a church there. Ichabod, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no Ichabod. The glory departed. Now there's apartments. No. We want it to remain the house of the Lord. It won't be long now, God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, your head's going to swim. One thing fast on the hills of the other. You won't even be able to keep up with it. Everything will be happening all at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I'm going to make everything right again for my people. And they're going to rebuild those ruined cities. They're going to plant those vineyards. They're going to work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. And I'll plant them. I'll plant them on their own land. 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 And they'll never again be uprooted from the land I've given them. No. I will rescue you and make both of you a symbol and a source of blessing. How many believe this building can be a source of blessing? How many believe the, the, that church building can be a source of blessing? How many believe the gas station can be a source of blessing? All our buildings. Come on, somebody. So don't be afraid, freedom. Be strong and get on with rebuilding my temple. What an honor. What a privilege. An open door has opened. I didn't expect to preach this message this morning. I didn't expect to get that news on Monday. But we got it. Now what are we going to do with it? Are we going to sit back in unbelief? Huh? What are we going to do? No. I'm your leader. I'm your Joshua. I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to do my part. Come on, somebody. How many want to take the land? Come on, I said, how many want to take the land? Lift your hands up and say, God... I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll take the land for my family, for my children, my children's children, for my marriage, my future marriage, for our city, for the next generation. We're going to take the land for your glory, for your honor, in Jesus' name. Somebody worship the Lord today. Come on.